This is just me. There's no in between. So this, this is just me. Is just me. Why there There's is no, no in between. In between. So this, this ain't my scene. I beg my lead. My face ain't clean. Me. This is just me. Some ways I lean, escaping green. I state my dream, not in between. This ain't my scene. I beg my lead. My face ain't clean. This is just me. Some ways I lean, escaping green. No in between. This is just me. to be here with you. Um, you are watching the Coffee Shop Conversation show. I am Nestine. And I would be Peter. We are the co-founders of Explore Protect Entrepreneurial Haven. We have with us today all of the best expert entrepreneurs in the world from various industries representing from different countries. They're all here to answer your questions on customer relationship management. This is going to be epic. Okay, so let me just remind you how the show works. During the week, me and Peter will go on to LinkedIn, we'll check your comments on YouTube and Facebook, we'll chat to you guys and we'll get your questions. What do you want to know about entrepreneurship? What is it that would make that difference in your business right now if you just had the knowledge? You give us your questions, we collate them, we pick the ones we're going to ask on the show, and then we bring them here every single Friday, and we get our tribe of expert real entrepreneurs onto the panel, and we make them answer your questions. Um, actually, if you think about it, the best way to get an answer is not to ask for one perspective, and I think that's what's so great, because we have perspectives from multiple industries, from across the board, from across the world, so you're going to get a more holistic answer. So pay attention. So that is what we are here to do. We're doing that again today. You can see some familiar faces from our tribe on the screen. All the guys you've been seeing so far. And some new faces. And some new faces. So today, guys, I have to introduce to you a Megan Kronberger from The Marketing Lifeline. She just signed up to be a, one of our tribe members this very morning. And she is already answering your questions on the Coffee Shop Conversation show. How awesome is that? Thank you, Megan. We're so happy to see you here. It's awesome to be here. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so um, on that note, we have some other new faces. So we have the absolutely incredible, amazing Anna Marie Silliers with us. She is a customer relationship management expert, guys. She's been doing training with our tribe members. So she's the one that's going to be getting um, difficult with the rest of the tribe members if they don't know the answers to your questions. <laughs> But it is amazing, amazing to have you here, Anna Marie. She's an expert guest joining us today on the panel, going to be answering your questions. And then we also have a guest with us, 
Um, Becky Cise, it is amazing to have you here. He's basically here checking out what this show is all about. Um, so yeah, this is going to be amazing. Guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask um, the questions. We're going to pose the questions to the panel members and they will put up their hearts. We'll do, we'll do this in our normal game show format. If they're happy to answer a question, they will put up the heart. Me and Peter will cue them from there and about three people per question will be giving you mm -hmm. the answers that you need. Okay, are you guys ready? Oh, they're so ready. They are so ready. Born ready. Okay, here we go. Peter, what is our first question? Okay, so Esme, I hope this delivers a lot of value to you. So the question is, what does a good customer relationship management system look like in practice? Esme, hold on to your seat. Not everyone all at once, please. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, let's put, why not just put Anna Marie right there on the spot. Anna Marie, you are our expert for today. What does a good customer relationship management system look like in practice? You're gonna have to unmute yourself unless we're playing charades. <laughs> um, I was hoping you could read lips. <laughs> so, um, a good CRM system is easy to use. It's not complicated. It doesn't scare you with all the bells and whistles and fancy things it can do. And you have to be able to see everything about that customer in a concise format. You don't have to click a gazillion times to get to something. Um, and to be able to view your different segments and your different statuses should be a click or two away in short must be simple not too complicated brilliant so in practice a good customer relationship management system has to be simple who has something to add on to that shall we go with the marlin august mr super sales thank you nestine um i think a good relationship management system is more about thinking through what it is that you need um, in like what does that look like you know if, you, if you've taken time to really look at the process the process internally the process what does the customer sort of need um, and then you go and look for the software that can suit those needs um, then you'll find you'll find the best the best sort of um, tools that you can use to either automate or to help you streamline your process. So I would say take quite a lot of time to just think it through a little bit and. I think Marlon is keeping us in suspense in the, <laughs> on purpose because I really want to hear the answer. <laughs> no, he's blowing us a kiss. Marlon, come on. And why, it's so unfair. Why does he get to freeze in that position? Like I never freeze in that good a position. Okay, Marlon, when you come back, we'd love to hear the rest of that, of that answer. But I think what you're trying to say is it all comes back to understanding your customer and really thinking through the actual journey. So it is very much what works for you. But um, if you're back, we'd love to hear the rest of your answer. Maybe for now, let's go to the Westwood. Mr. Magic Marketing. Hi, everyone. Um, so I liked what Anna Marie said because Customer relationship management is about establishing a relationship with your customers. It's that simple. It's about getting them on board, making them a partner, being part of their world. So what a good customer relationship management system looks like in practice or in practicality is you go to where they are, you provide them with what they want and need. Um, 
And again, if, linking back to what Marlon was saying, it is about understanding who your customer is. Now, I know Marlon touched on things like automation and stuff like that, but that can quickly become overcomplicated. So just to keep it simple, it is having everything in front of you, like what Anna Marie was saying, it's about having access to that information now rather than having to try and find it. And then using that information to build and establish the relationship with your customers. Thank you very much. I'm Stephen Westwood from SBW Copywriting. Thank you so much, Stephen. Okay, that's an amazing answer. So am I hearing you guys right? There's no like set thing that you need to do every single day that all of you guys are doing every single day in terms of customer relationship management. Maybe, okay, let's move on to the marketing lifeline. Megan, for the first time, do you want to tell us um, what does a good customer relationship management system look like in practice? Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Um, I think for me, relating it back to what I tell my clients as well is, is we need to be capturing those leads. I think that's the reality. The way to manage a customer relationship tool is, is probably easier because we can then contain the data and then feed the relevant information. So the most important thing for me as a customer relationship management is ensuring we're capturing those leads of our current customers. There's a number of businesses out there that have a database of clients, but it's in an Excel document in a folder on their computer. Um, so we just want to get that data into a system so we can start feeding them with valuable information and even just cross-selling and upselling across your different services, depending on the size of your business. Sometimes we miss out on such key opportunities um, when we've got this data available. So hope that helps. That helps a lot. Thank you so much, Megan. I forgot, guys, to say, please, at the end of your answer, just say your name, surname, and where you're from. So that was Megan Kronberger from the Marketing Lifeline. We always forget it on the show. Don't worry, Megan. It's, it's good that you forgot it. You're putting in. So, <laughs> okay. So it's all about having leads not actually going missing and then having opportunities not going missing. That's why this is so extremely vital. That is very, very awesome. Okay, guys. Well, if you think about it, um, information is power. Um, the more you know, the more powerful you become. Um, you can relate it to um, um, like gangsters, you know, like people that were in charge and the big bosses. Why were they in charge? Because they had all the information. They knew who exactly was doing what. They knew, they knew everything. Why do you think we ever had spies in the world? Because information is power, you know? So... The more you know, the more powerful you become. So customer relationship, the more you know about your customer, the more you're able to help them. Hmm. For sure. And that's something that we really struggle with. I mean, we're some of the most unstructured entrepreneurs in the world. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> so keeping track of those mm -hmm. leads and all of the customers is where a good virtual assistant, a good marketing person, a good just yeah, um, yeah. customer relationship expert can really make the world of difference. Okay, guys, so the next question is from John, and John wants to know, so what type of software do you guys use for your customer relationship management? Okay, let's go to Matthew, the push-up guy from Nigeria. Freelance Matthew, what software do you use for your customer relationship management? I am not the push-up guy from Nigeria. <laughs> I'm a copywriter. <laughs> All right. So um, <laughs> this is a fantastic question. And I'm sure that when we start to hear everybody's answers, you'll find that there's really no one software because there are many different services out there and it really depends on what you're looking for. So I like to use MailChimp because my list is very, very short and it's, they have a free plan. So I just use that and it has enough automations on the free plan for me to get the value that I'm looking for. But one, if you have a, a large business or a long list of you know, emails, what I would recommend is HubSpot. It's not cheap, but they have a lot of automations that can really, really help you to manage your leads. Um, Megan was talking about capturing leads and making sure that nothing slips through the cracks. And it's very important because if 
you have somebody on your email list, for example, and then they stop opening the emails, you need to be able to see that some people are no longer interacting with your emails the way they need to. And then you need to be able to initiate a new step of processes, maybe send them a list of emails that, to find out why they're not interacting and some of the things you can use to get them back. And a good um, email, mark, a good customer relation management system will help you to identify that and then do that. So you want to make sure that whatever you're trying to um, accomplish, whether it's to manage your customers, identify leads, you want to make sure that your system can help you do that. So I use a free system, but if you have a long list of leads and your business is very large, then you want to go with something that's paid and can give you more options. I hope that helps. That helps a lot. Thank you so much, Matthew. And um, okay, so MailChimp is an option. I was wondering if the email marketing software is actually an option for customer relationship management. But so some of you are using that. That's awesome to know. Okay, let's move on to our virtual sales office. Janine, you should have a really cool answer for us. So what software do you use for your customer relationship management? Well, I'm, you know, you know me, I'm different. And um, when it comes to CRM systems for me specifically, I actually use Excel. The reason for that is because as a virtual assistant, I've got so many clients. And with that, not all of them have the money to actually purchase a CRM system, especially if you want to customize it to your specific needs as an entrepreneur. But with CRM, I just want to say something here that there's, there's, there's an operational CRM system that you can use. And then there's an analytical CRM system that can be used. Now, the operational CRM system is more to streamline business processes where you can automate sales and that kind of stuff. Where your analytical CRM is more focused on marketing and support personnel to determine the better way to service customers. So there's a lot of ways to actually work with a CRM system. And I absolutely agree that it is needed. And for entrepreneurs, if you really want to look at something, also go and look at HubSpot. HubSpot CRM system is also a very good one to use. So um, I hope I've helped you with that. I'm Janine from Jelani Sales, your virtual sales office. Awesome, great. Um, thank you so much for that answer, Janine. Okay, so we'll go check out HubSpot. By the way, guys, I will link all of the softwares that the people are mentioning for you in the description. I'm keen to hear, though, from our expert on the topic, Anna Marie. Um, can you give us an example of software that you use for customer relationship management and why? Um, yeah, and Nestine, um, I first want to say that I agree with both Janine and with um, Matthew. Um, it all depends on what you want from the system, and that will determine the type of system you use. Um, so personally, I use one page CRM. It's not a well known system. It's not like the HubSpots and the Zoos and the um, Salesforces. Um, and what I like about it is its simplicity and the easy navigation and how you literally see everything on one page, on one screen, everything about the client, all the interactions. Um, so, yeah, for me, it's definitely one page CRM if you are looking for a, um, a more the operational kind of system. Um, and the reason, apart from the simplicity, is one page forces you to set an action for every contact or every client to have on your list. So as soon as you have done something for one customer or one client, the system tells you to set another action. So you will never forget to follow up on a lead or a prospect or anything like that. So, and that to me is the benefit because this is often where we lose the client, we drop the ball is not staying in touch or forgetting about the quote or not following up on the proposal you sent. Um, and the system is just a great reminder. So it's absolutely focused on the sale um, and making sure you clinch the deal. Amazing. Okay. I like that. I think I want to read what those suggestions are because um, that will give me a better idea as well on what to do with our actual customers. But I think we're really getting into the nitty gritty now. I love it. Thank you so much, Anna Marie. That sounds so interesting. Okay. Megan, 
Um, I'm keen to hear like what software do you use for your customer relationship management? Is it a built-in system? Is it Excel? Is it a pen and paper? What is it? I wish it was pen and paper. <laughs> <laughs> So I, yeah, I mean, I obviously help clients as well set up different um, CRM systems, not specifically myself, but advise. And just as Anna Maria said, it depends on what the client's needs are. So as she's mentioned, you know, if, if they kind of get sales in for sales teams to have to follow up um, and then kind of move them along the processes, you know, are they warm? Have they contacted them? What's the next step? And those are the likes of the Zohos and the HubSpots and the fresh sales of the world. So depending on what your type of business is, if it's more consultant based like us, where we rely on leads, but then we just want to kind of nurture them and get them through our system, then the likes of Mailer, Mailer Light, MailChimp, I use Active Campaign. You know, those are quite, quite um, well, let's say some of them are cheap. Some of them are free, depending on, as Matthew mentioned, your number of, of um, leads and, and actually quite user-friendly as well. So. That's my preference. I've also looked at the rates of the deliverability on, on Active Campaign, and generally they deliver quite high rates because that's another consideration. If you do bulk mails, a lot of stuff lands up in spam. So there's a hundred out there. I think there's Aweber, there's um, your know, I also have used Connect365, there's hundreds. So I think the, the point that you need to ask is what is your objective? If your objective is just to start. Um, capturing leads and just communicating with them, then you could well look at like an active campaign. But if your system is a little bit more advanced and you've actually got kind of a sales team following up with leads coming in and kind of tracking the lead process, then you'd probably need something a bit more like Zoho that can manage that for you. So I hope that helps. That's Megan from the Marketing Lifeline. Thank you, Megan. Awesome. I love that. So much value coming out, guys. Um, Peter, can we have the next question? Oh, I don't know. Please. Okay. Um, I'm very keen to hear the answer to this, guys. Okay. Listen okay. carefully. Okay. This is this is for Derek. Uh, Derek, oh, we got your back. Okay, so give us an example of where good customer relationship management has resulted in increased opportunities for you. Hmm. So give us an example where good customer relationship management has resulted in increased opportunities for you. Derek, pay close attention. Okay, let's hear from Janine. It, you know what, it's such a good question. And I can, I'm sure <laughs> Anna Marie can also have a full day with that. But my answer would be is, when you when you build your relationship, don't constantly sell. Please do not do that. Just draw the state top of mind and show that you are the expert that you are telling people you are. So when you do your follow ups with your clients is rather do it in such a manner that you are educating them and staying top of mind, they will convert into sales. And that's exactly what happens with my clients. When we do the email marketing, we don't sell. It's not about the product. It's just about giving tips and ideas. And did you know this? And did you know that? And through that, the leads converted to actual business. So it's just the way you communicate with your clients. So be very careful by just focusing on the sale. I'm Janine from Jelani Sales, your virtual sales office. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Janine from Jelani Sales saying, don't focus on the sales. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, you can learn a lot. Love it. Okay. <laughs> Um, Anna-Marie, I know you have an epic story for us on how good customer relationship management resulted in increased opportunities. Please, will you share it with us? Um, I guess you're referring to the $35,000 golf ball. Yeah. Um, so this is all about really getting to know your customer. And I almost want to say checking them out and sussing them out. So the story comes from, it's not a personal story, but I can relate. Um, is The um, story comes from Joey Coleman. He's the author of the book, Never Lose a Customer Again. And he tells how he had a very important meeting with a Fortune 500 sales uh, company executive. 
um, to sell a proposal to join a, a membership. So as Joey enters this guy's office, he just sees everything is about golf. This guy is a golf fanatic of note. Um, and so to break the ice, Joey says to him, um, I see you like golf. Um, I'm going to play in Augusta, oh, not Augusta, now I can't remember the um, golf course um, next week. Um, and they start talking about golf and everything is about golf. So Joey starts getting nervous because it's time to leave, you know, his time's almost up and they haven't spoken about the proposal at all. Um, and as he leaves, they quickly drops the proposal off and he says, well, if you have time, have a look, but he's not very optimistic because, you know, they didn't, never really discussed the opportunity. So the next week, Joey is... Um, at the golf course and he walks into the little shop and there's a, a golf ball celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Masters. And he buys this golf ball and he sends it with FedEx to this executive dude he saw um, with a note that says, uh, Dear John, um, I, I can't remember the exact words, but um, I saw this golf ball and I thought of you and I guess think it will be a very great memento to put into your golf haven that you currently have. Hopefully we get to play together soon. Sincerely, Joey. So the next day he gets a phone call to say that the guy accepted his proposal and he signed up for a deal worth $35,000. So I think that is just, you know, taking note of what your customers' interests are, showing that you care. It's all about, and this is what you said, Janine, and it's about building a relationship and showing that you listen, that you notice, that you really care because people want to know you care. And with a CRM system where you can capture everything about your customers, it just makes it so much easier. So, yeah, to me it is... It is the personal touch. That's what we saw here from the productivity lab. I Isn't remember it. Well done. Thank you, Anna Marie. I just love that story. I love that story because I've seen it in practice. Like I used to in my first business, I didn't know what customer relationship management was, but I knew, you know, if I had a relationship with the people that I was serving, like life just gets easier from there. You know, it's when you don't have a relationship that everything is difficult. So I used to keep keep like books for every client. I would open a new <laughs> like a hard copy book. I would have our meeting notes in there. And in there, I would have nothing about their actual business. I would write in there, kid was sick on this date. Um, going on vacation, going there, like like hiking. And literally every time I would um, have a rule, I would not let any customer like not see me face-to-face -face, um, for, for more than like two months. So I would have those face-to-face -face meetings back then and then it started to become Zoom meetings. But every two months I would at least see everyone. And I would um, take the book and I would literally just read it quickly again before I would speak to them. And mm. it made such a difference. What happened to me was like, I actually tripled the spend from our um, existing customer base in that way. And I did that in two years and it was amazing. Like the upselling, cross-selling, whatever selling, it just kind of naturally happens when you're asking someone like, oh yeah, and how was the hike? And when you must do that again. Like you look kind of tired, maybe do that. And then they're like, oh yeah. And by the way, can you do my taxes for my wife as well? Like that would be amazing. And I'm like, yeah, no problem. Let's do it. You know, so it really, really works. So I just adore that story. But I'm keen to hear. So Megan also had her heart up. Megan, um, what is your story of how good customer relationship management has led to more opportunities? Shamil, and then I think Matthew desperately wants to share his, but mine was very much about what both ladies have said is getting to know your customers. So I think what I want to just touch on after there is that we want to don't duplicate is also remembering like being real face to face. So everything is online and we have systems. Um, but you know, like yesterday I had a chat with a lady that does carpet cleaning and I was telling you like, she was like, yo, she's struggling with a loyalty plan. I was like, it's fine. Like maybe leave a spritzer behind, you know, or offer them a clean rug or, you know, next time if it's, the, you know, their birthday or something, just 
remember it's also personal because I know everything is about online, but customer relationship management is also what experience do they get when they actually interact with you and how can you make that memorable for them? So that is all I just wanted to say. That's Megan from the Marketing Lifeline. Thanks. Love it. Thank you, Megan. Okay, Matthew, you are like very, very, very excited to share your story. Please can we hear it? Yeah, so as you were talking about keeping a book for each of your clients, I remember something I saw in the office. I don't know if anybody has seen the office. It's this comedic TV show. So one of the main characters, Michael Scott, one of the things he does is he has notes about every of his clients. And the clients were so many, but he has notes about each and every of them. So before he meets them face to face, he will take some of the notes and go through some of the things that concerns their life. So he color coded it. So some colors mean, okay, talk about this. This person is comfortable talking about this. But then some colors are like, okay, this shouldn't be talked about. And so because of that, he was able to have a very nice relationship with his clients. So somebody then stole his notes. The computer stole his notes to try and use it to go behind his back and steal his client. So the computer didn't know how he sorted this story. So some of the things that I wasn't supposed to talk about, he labeled it green. And so because green means go, the guy just assumed you should talk about it. So the guy just said, how is your wife? I heard she was in an accident. I heard your son is this. And so the client, <laughs> the client was absolutely upset. So the whole relationship was ruined which was very good for Michael because not only did he know how to handle his clients, he also knew how to keep that information confidential so that it works for only him. So I just thought I'd share that story just as a um, distraction or whatever. <laughs> I'm Matthew from freelancematthew.com. I'm a copywriter. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Or if you want to just call him the push-up guy, that's also fine. Because he literally does his, he does his pitch on LinkedIn doing push-ups. Come on, guys. Like, you have to check this out. Like, <laughs> I just love it. Um, you know what? Um, if, if we take CRM and the idea and the thought and the process and the thought process behind it, um, it, it always takes, takes a thought process to create a system. And the thought process is that we get to know who our customers are on a, more per, on a more personal level. And then we take a look at reality. The reality is of the world at the moment, um, people are battling, um, people are getting sick, there's COVID, um, people have lost loved, one, loved ones. There is so much going on in, on in the world. And those people, the world, those are our customers. And we need to be the ones that are actually caring for them. So... If you take the thought process of a CRM, the thought process is not, how can I use this to make more money? The thought process is, how can I use this to look after the customers that I have? Because they want to know that you actually do care. Um, if one of your customers have been sick and you've got that information, you wanna make sure, hey, are you, are, are you okay? Let us know how you're feeling. You know? Is there something I can do for you? Is there something you need? And, and that shouldn't be about business and it's not about the money. The money comes later. If you think about the money first, good for you, well done, good job. Um, if you think about your customer first, the money will naturally come all on its own. Um, be personal. Know when to say the right things. That's what a CRM does for you. Don't you have some awesome stories as well? Um, you do. Tell one of them. I've never used a CRM. Never. Uh, I, I think, but the concept, if you take the concept of CRM and you put it into your business, even if you don't use the tool, use the concept because the concept is I have clients. I need, need to look after those clients. I need to keep them happy when my clients are happy then they will come back because the best business is repeat business looking for new business is expensive if you want to look for new business all the time um because you're not looking after your existing business then you that you're going to be in that process forever when you look after your existing business not only are your customers happy but they they will come back and they will come back again and repeat business is the best business you can ever do so uh, in one of the industries that I was working in, um, not only would I utilize that thought process, but I would have my clients utilizing the same process because they would all sit in the same space. 
So when your clients adopt the, the same mentality as what you have, they then make your other clients feel even more comfortable. So yes, I used to work in the entertainment industry and um, I would have clients sitting at a bar and as new clients would walk in, because I would generally be the one saying, ah, oh, I haven't seen you before. What's your name? Who are you? Um, grab a seat, um, get comfortable. My clients turn that space into a home, a space where they could all be, feel comfortable. So when new people walked in, they would all automatically turn around and go, oh, we haven't met you before. Welcome, take a seat, sit down. And the space became so comfortable that it just got more and more and more. And the more you look after them, the more they also look after each other, the more precious it becomes. So adopt that mentality. Mm -hmm. If you then use a CRM, you can control that mentality and have access to all of that information, which is exactly what you need. Make sure you don't forget about anyone. I love that. Yeah. Okay, next question. Which one? The This one, it's Sharon. Sharon? Sharon? Sharon. Sharon. Hmm. Okay, here's a, here's a good one that she relates to our last conversation. So, how do you check in with your existing customers? Do you have a fixed rule? So, how often do you check in with your existing customers? Do you have a fixed rule? Okay, mm -hmm. let's hear from the Westwood sitting very quietly in this corner today, but still ready to take on the world. Stephen. Um, yeah, so I check in regularly with my existing customers. If I'm working on a project, then I make it a point to check in with them weekly. If I'm not working on a project with them currently, then what I do is I check in on them at least every six weeks or so, just because you never know what's coming up and they don't know what's coming up. And sometimes it takes that little prompt to get them to think, oh, actually, but yeah, I'm actually enjoying just listening to this conversation, which is why I've been quite quiet. So thank you, I'm Stephen from SPW Copywriting. Stephen, where do you find time to check in with every single person every six weeks? Well, luckily it's not all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so good planning. Coming from Stephen Westwood. <laughs> planning, okay. that, that, that's appropriate. Okay. Actually. Goal setting. Goal setting, planning. Uh, Got it. Okay. Wait. Okay. Anyway, so moving on, I want to hear how often do you check in with your clients, Rita? Uh, maybe I'm the lucky one that probably can uh, check in with my clients every week or every second week. But that when when we're, when they done and they had enough. Uh, well, when they reach their goal, I also still check in. And I, I will go back and I will go and ask them, just listen, how are you doing? Um, are you coping? Are you okay? Happy birthday. Um, and, it, and it's really, it's that part that builds the, 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 the long-lasting relationship. Um, what I also do is, in my other networking um, space, I will, if, if, there's, if, if somebody did a keynote, I will very specifically pick up the phone and speak to that person and say, well done with that keynote. I will not drop it in, uh, in the global space mm. because that does make a huge difference when you pick up the phone and you say to that guy, well done. Awesome presentation. But in my general, um, with all my clients, I, I do a follow-up. Um, if it's serious stuff, I will, um, you know, you assess the situation for the day. If it's serious stuff, I will pick up the phone and just say, listen, are you okay after yesterday's conversation? Are you in a good space? Uh, because that is important. Uh, just to, to, to help them contain whatever has happened in, in, in the conversation. So, yeah, uh, just 
be there for your client. Have that conversation with them. Um, share it with them. Um, makes a huge difference in, in their lives. Rita Skuman, Coaching with Heart. Um, Rita, I think when you mentioned picking up the phone, um, Janine was all full of smiles. Um, because that, that does actually make it very personal. It makes it very personal. And if you, if, you can't be, if you can't be personal, or if you don't have time for people, then you don't have time for clients. It's, um, then it's just cold-hearted business. And the way of the world is changing. Nobody's interested in cold-hearted business anymore. Mm. You know, people want to form relationships. You know, we went through a space where everybody was stuck. You know, going from a space where we could actually really interact with people to a space where we were now at home and we want to, and we need to interact with people less. So everybody's looking to connect. Nobody wants to do cold, cold business anymore. So um, get get involved, get personal, become human. There's there's a, there's a good one. Yeah, be, and be human. You never know what opportunities are going to come from there. Um, okay, Janine, how often do you check in with your existing customers? Do you have a on, rule? On the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I love my clients and you, everybody should too, because, you know, a successful business can't be done without any long-term relationships. And that's ultimately the goal when you start your business is to have that long-term or long-lasting relationships with your clients. But I'm not now saying go and harass them. Please, please do not take this away from a don't harass them. But the method I do, what the method I follow is the 72430. What that means is once I've communicated with them um, uh, 24 7, sorry, 24 hours after my communication, I do a follow up. Seven days after that, it's another follow up, but it's not a follow up in a sales conversation it's a check-in how are you have are you busy with new projects um, shout if you need help kind of conversation and then um, 24 7 30 the 30 is a month in a month's time go back to them and see where they are it's like what Stephen said you know you don't know where they're at and you need to find that way to see what pains you can attack in the sense of the solution that you can provide I am Janine from Jelani Sales, your virtual sales office. Yes, please. I think Thank we you. should start doing that. Or we should just like, can, can we hire Janine full time? I want her for my Christmas present. <laughs> I, I think Janine's going to be very expensive. <laughs> that sounds awesome. No, but seriously, we should actually do that because I, I think me and Peter follow the um, crisis management rule. So similar to the 24-7 city rule, um, except that it's nothing like that and we give attention to whoever is shouting at us mm. on the day. <laughs> so no, I, I like yours better, Janine. Thank you. That's actually well, really valuable. Actually, I, I really like that process because <laughs> if it's a new client um, and you're gathering information during that process, not only do you get to find out what they're busy with, but then you also get to find out um, where you can help them and then they also feel like you really they really need to feel like you care because you're getting back to them saying oh th that project that you were busy with from the information that you had how is that project going hmm. that makes the world a difference my question is though is it possible to re to transfer customer relationships so does it always have to be me and peter checking up on our on our clients or is it possible to have like a person that's employed to do that? Can I see hearts on the screen? Like if it's possible to have a person to do that on your behalf? Okay, well, that's good news. Everyone except for Rita. Because <laughs> well, Rita, she wants to care. In person. in person. You're an awesome person, Rita. I also want to care in person, but only when I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Anna Marie, you had something to add, and then let's go to our next question, which is an interesting one. That will be the last one, and then we're going to hear about something really, really, really interesting that Megan is probably going to be interested in from Matthew. Okay, but first, let's hear what Anna Marie has to add on to this question. 
Thanks, Nestine. So just, and this to me is the power of using a CRM system is you impossibly cannot remember everything about every client. And if you log that on a system and you've got the right tags, then it's right there and you can do your 7, 24, 7, 30 follow-ups as reminders. Um, and then, Nestine, about your can you transfer relationships? Yes, I have worked with um for a client um where i took over the relationship you you i acknowledged her and said you previously dealt with her i am now working with her and i know that you spoke to her about xyz i'm just trying to find out as the problem bring the resolved has your budget improved Blah, blah, blah. So yes, you can. You must just make sure that it is sincere and it's authentic. That's that's the big thing. So it's very important about who you put in that role. Yeah. And I watched a fantastic um, webinar last night about um, empathy in customer service. And it is so crucial to have people with high EQ in a customer service role. So I think if you follow that principle, then it's easy because they will empathize, they will be able to pick up and to pick up nuances. And why Anna Marie, you still here at the Productivity Lab. Thank you, Anna Marie. Uh, well, that, that makes perfect sense. IQ, EQ. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> I wanted Anna Marie for Christmas as well, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds amazing. Okay, uh, next question, guys. So, do you think there is economies of scale in CRM when referring customers between each other in a network? That's from Lily. Lily, you also dared Janine this morning on the FBIS show. Thank you for that. We love you. Guys, can we, can we please give some really, really awesome answers to Lily? Um, because she's been watching a lot of our shows. So I want to know, do you think there is economies of scale in CRM when referring customers between each other in a fixed network? Rita, let's hear from you. Definitely, because in a fixed network, you've got a whole lot of experts. And if I am open listening to what my client is saying to me, I would be able to source the expert that she's looking for. So for sure, there's, there's huge opportunities in a network. Uh, it's just to find the right one. But for sure, there is huge opportunities in a network especially where scarcity is not an issue. In other words, I can surround myself with a whole bunch of coaches and we all specialize in a very specific niche. And if I don't have, if I am secure in myself, I will know what my own possibilities are where I can take my client to. And if I can't go there, I have enough security in myself to tell my client, I'm handing you over to this person that have got is the expert in this area of whatever the case might be. Rita Skuman, Coaching with Heart. Thank you, Rita. What an awesome answer. In, in that way, it is actually about the client. Yeah. But at the same time, it's not only about the client. It's about the relationships you have with the people that you network with too. Mm -hmm. so, so they kind of, they like in essence help you take care of the actual relationship. Stephen Westwood, do you want to add something? And then we'll hear Matthew's news. Um, I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> I love it how you put up your hearts always and then you're like, what was the question? No, 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 I remember, I remember, it's okay. Uh, the answer is yes. There are economies of scale when you are referring your colleagues within the network. What's happening is your reputation will build, not only because of the work that you're doing, but because of the work that your colleagues are doing. If you're recommending and referring the right people, what will happen is you will slowly grow 
your audience and you will slowly grow their audience at the same time. Giving your business a more powerful reach, giving your business a further reach, increasing the opportunities that present themselves to you. I'm Stephen Westwood from SPW Copywriting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. Um, hence the fact that we present so many other business professionals. To Stephen. Well, to everyone. <laughs> because then mm. you guys have to deal with the relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Until you send them back. No, seriously, that's actually... That's what we do. <laughs> that is what we do. You guys are awesome. We love you. Okay. Matthew, you're busy with something really, really, really interesting that I, I have never heard anything like this before. Please just share with us. And I don't know if you're going to challenge the rest of the entrepreneurs to do this with you or not, or but just share with us what you're doing. Okay. Uh, so before I share it, you have to promise not to make it a name for me because now you're calling me a push-up guy. I don't want to, after I share the news. <laughs> I promise. Yeah, okay. It wouldn't do that to you, push-up guy. I mean, Matthew, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so what I'm doing is I am running a half marathon. I just um, sort of a challenge for myself. So there's no actual race going on. I just woke up one day and decided that I was going to try and do a half marathon. And I'm currently training for it. So I've been training for the past nine to ten weeks. And my race day is in three weeks. And I'm very, very excited about it. So I will not challenge anybody because I think the tribe has had enough of my fitness challenges by now. But if you, if you are interested in joining me, I'll be very happy to have you. I'm trying to look up the date because all I just do is try for, to go from week to week. Um, when the day comes, it comes, you know. So I will announce the date on the tribe WhatsApp news. If anybody wants to join me for a quick run, you can just do it. If it's a mile, if it's three miles, just join me. And then we can all just celebrate together. So that's my news. I think that we need to do it live and have people join. <laughs> Matthew is like, there's no way I'm <laughs> carrying around a camera <laughs> while running. So um, I will not be able to record while running because I'm going to be a mess. I'm going to be all sweaty and I'll be in my, uh, yeah. So but I could do it before and after the race. If that's something. I think the camera doesn't need to face you and you don't need to speak, but the camera needs to face out because it's recording your journey. And then if other people are actually running with you, um, we can record them because they're going to be running shorter distances with you. If that makes that would sense. Be interesting. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I'd be interested in that actually. So you just take your phone and strap it to your head like this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Matthew, you're on. I'll do I'll do 20 one, meters. One kilometer with you. <laughs> and then we'll get Eva to run the race with you and Maya can do the race as well. Oh, Maya will be all over this. <laughs> <laughs> Megan also said your game on. So I think that is so fabulous. Mm. Um, it's really, really, really fun. And I've never heard of anyone that goes like, I'm just gonna do a half marathon, pick a day, and it's my race, let's do it. So, yeah, epic. I wanted you to just share that with the guys. Guys, this has been the Coffee Shop Conversation Show where we give you real answers from real entrepreneurs across the world. I hope you learned a lot. I certainly got some really, really cool tips. I'm going to be doing that 24-7 city rule. Um, Janine attempting it. I'll, I'll be attempting it until Peter can get me a Janine and Anna Marie for Christmas. Oh, we'll, be, we'll be getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, and uh, oh, oh, if you can add a Megan as well, that would be. Mm. <laughs> okay, guys, this has been us, uh, Coffee Shop Conversation Show. Remember to send us your questions. What do you want to know about entrepreneurship? We'll get you more answers next week, same time, same place. Come back and join us. Also, don't forget. Tonight is Global Online Speed Networking. Join us there. We want to see you. We want to meet you. These awesome people on the screen will be there and they are ready to build relationships with you. So what are you waiting for? Link is in the description below. See you guys. We will see you again next time. Lots of love. May all your wildest entrepreneurial dreams come true. Have fun. Keep it real. <laughs>